So, Robin Robbins, I uh, want to tell you about her. Asking your prospective customer to buy often results in some sort of an objection or resistance to your price. Robin, she specializes in selling to IT companies. She is the top marketing advisor in the world to the IT industry, and she's got over uh, 3,100 of them to invest in her uh, very high-level training and coaching, which is amazing. Uh, she's going to focus on a very important area for everyone here, how to eliminate sales objections and erase price resistance. Please give it up for Robin Robbins. All right. Sorry, guys. I should have told Joe I'd pay only 10 grand for that advice. So... Um... Hindsight, you know. Um, anyway, so I want to share with you a strategy that we've been using at my company and I teach my clients that has helped us to dramatically improve our chances in closing the opportunities that we get in front of, okay? So um, just to kind of give you an idea, we are closing roughly between 23-24% of the raw leads that we generate and we are closing 70% when they get to the point where they're actually talking to a salesperson, and it's for a $3,000 product, and I don't know if you consider that really good or really bad or whatever it is, but that's what it is, and it's real, this, this process has helped us. And what it is, is instead of handling objections the way most sales trainers teach you, it's about thinking about what the objections are going to be in advance and killing them before they've, e they've ever been brought up, okay? Because I think sales training fails in the sense that they teach you how to handle objections. And I believe that if you try and handle an objection once the customer has delivered it to you, you're not handling anything, you are arguing with them, okay? So let me give you an example. Um, my clients uh, sell outsourced IT support services, right? And how many, does anyone in here outsource uh, some aspect of IT, right, okay? So let's suppose you're talking to an IT person and I'm going to read you, this is a, a sales trainer. I'm not going to mention who the sales trainer is. Uh, very well-known sales trainer. And I'm not discrediting what, he, what he's teaching. But imagine you're sitting across the desk with uh, a potential IT company you're thinking of outsourcing to. And they, they tell you what they can do and they give you the price. And you think out loud or you say out loud, I don't know, that, that price seems a little bit high, I can get it cheaper somewhere else. That's what you tell to this salesperson. Now imagine them responding to you and saying, well, that might be true, Mr. Johnson, and after all, in today's economy, we all want the most for our money. And a truth that I've learned over the years is that the cheapest price is not always what we really want. Most people look for three things when choosing an IT provider. One, competence. Two, a highly responsive service. And three, lowest price. And I've never yet found a company that can provide highly competent technicians and a highly responsive help desk for the lowest price. I'm curious, Mr. Johnson, for your long-term happiness, which of the three would you be most willing to give up? Competence, responsiveness, or the lowest price? Now, I had to read that because there's no way in hell I'm going to memorize that. But can any of you f imagine being on the other end? Like, you'd laugh, right? I mean, you'd, you, I would laugh. Like, I'd be like, okay, can you say it again? Oh, I've got to record this on video because this is pretty damn funny. And how many of you can imagine actually with a straight face articulating that to a customer? Y you can't. It's, and because you're arguing, it, it's condescending at this point. I've just verbalized uh, something that I'm, I'm not comfortable with or a question I have or something, and now you're trying to argue with me and tell me that I'm stupid or I'm wrong and so forth. So that's why I think when you build your sales presentations, you have to know what the objections are in advance, and you build it into your presentation, and you deliver it as an educational piece of content. So for example, the way I teach my guys to handle that objection is we actually have a report that I wrote, actually, um, which is what you should expect to pay for IT support in, like, like uh, LA, if, if we were in LA, okay? Now, this is a report, it's very well written, it's well researched, it shows the different pricing models of how the industry charges, what the average price is, it talks about gotchas in a contract, some things that are excluded and what you wanna look for. Now, when we give that to a prospect in advance of the sales meeting and we ask them to read it, or even in the sales meeting itself, we reference parts of this and say, well, according to the industry research that we've done, I could tell you that this is what most people charge. Yes, we're a little bit higher, but this is why we're a little bit higher, and you give an intelligent answer to that, now the prospect's more likely to trust you and more likely to buy. So in, our, uh, in my business, um, we think of what, is, what are going to be the objections in advance. So what, a lot of it is what we send to the prospect before they meet with us. And if I could get this screen up, 
I want to show you something that we've been working on. This is, um, we call it our online shock and awe. Now, what this is, it's a customized, personalized URL. So where it says Aaron Light up there, it would be whoever your prospect is. And um, I, what you can do here in this, this video, we actually have two versions of this. One has, this is Jeff Johnson, who's um, my VP of the, the high-end coaching we do. And so you can have a personalized video message for the prospect. And you can see over here, there is a, there's like a little video. Uh, this is going to be a video testimonial. There's an audio. Um, but, I, but I'll show you this one. So in, in this case, this one, for example, is a testimonial video. So they come to the personalized URL, and instantly it starts playing a testimonial First year, video. First our business uh, increased sales probably about 15%. Last year it was 30%, and I expect no less this year. My net profit was up by almost 150%. Wait, say that again. Your net profit was up 150%? My net profit was up 149 plus percent, yes. Last year I spent three So I'm not going to play the whole video for you, but you get the idea. Now that could be a personalized video or, or it could be a, a testimonial one. Um, what I want to show you though, which has been extremely helpful for us, is and these personalized websites, we can stand them up in literally 30 seconds. But we send this in advance of the consultation that my salesperson is going to sit down with this prospect. And so one of the things that we know, for example, is they might no-show for their consultation, right? Because they kind of know it's a sales pitch. In, in some. So one of the things we tell them is you have to be in front of a computer because we do not send them the content of the presentation in advance. So for example, if you do any kind of report of findings, if you're giving any kind of value with our consultations, we actually give them a marketing roadmap. And, it's, and it is a very high value piece of content. We make sure that they are on the call, all decision makers are there, and then we email them. So that's, that handles one objection. Another objection we know is that the decision maker might not show up. So what happens is the CEO doesn't show up, but the marketing person does. And what objection then does that create? Does everyone know? I got to talk it over with the boss. And we know they always say they're the decision maker, but then they use that as an out. We will not hold the consultation if the decision maker's not there. And, we ha and in advance, we've got on the letter, you know, to get the most out of the consult, we have three requirements. One is you're in front of your computer in a quiet place in front of email. That way we can send them the roadmap. Number two, that the decision maker is there. And we have a whole script if they come back and say that they can't be there. And uh, we also ask them to watch a couple videos. And the videos essentially are handling objections. Um, another thing that we've done, now depending, these little reports down here are customizable. And depending on who the person is, and what size company they are, what type of company they are, we change the content at the bottom. So let's suppose, for example, we found when we were doing consults with companies that are larger IT service providers, they're doing 20 million a year, 10 million, 15, 20 million, they might say, they were saying to Aaron, my sales guy, um, you know what, uh, your stuff probably doesn't work for us, we're a big company, it's too small, and vice versa. So in, if he is talking to a larger IT services firm, we actually have this, which is a little page of testimony that will pop up that are all from companies that are doing anywhere from 12 million to 24 million and testimonials about the program. So that handles that objection. Um, over here, you know, this is basically a testimonial book. Um, and we make sure with our testimonials that we have a variety. So we make sure we don't just have men, we don't just have women. We have some people that are from India, Indian descent, because that's a, a percentage of the IT industry is that. Um, over here is an audio that Hello, if everyone, I played on, this is the an interview. Step marketing secret. That so I'm not going to play that for you, but that is somebody interviewing me um, on basically handling objections. So a couple things to take away from this. Number one, this is a cool factor which gets people to consume it because they start clicking around. So that's number one. You got to get people to consume your marketing. If you don't do that, it doesn't matter how brilliant it is. It, it falls on deaf ears. Second of all, because of the cool factor, people share it, right? So they're like, hey, check this out. And they email it to other people and we can see how many views there have been, all right? Now, how do you put this to work in your business? Even if you don't have this kind of a shock and all box, here's what I would recommend. Make a list of every single objection that you get in your business. And if you get right down to it, there's probably only three or four really big ones. Think about how are you going to handle that in advance before they talk to you how are you going to design your marketing and your sales presentation so that you kill those objections so that when it comes to asking for the order, they can't weasel out of it with something, some kind of excuse? 
all right? And uh, the other thing is be listening to your salespeople's uh, phone calls because there's so much value in that. As I grow my company and I hire salespeople and I'm not doing the selling as much anymore as I used to, you can sort of lose touch with that end customer. So it's really important that you're actually you're reviewing some of the recorded calls with your salespeople, listening to those objections, and then building the marketing out in advance so that those objections are basically erased. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you all. Thank you, Joe.